Bowie, oh, what a scary man in that photo. He's got a massive smile on his face too. Those eyes, those eyes are scary though. And no wonder, the uh, he's so good at football. He runs a wall hard and straight, good footwork, and they struggle to tackle him, tackle him at times when they give him the footy, the Titans boys. But um, we will bring that back out there because uh, we do love Bowie. But um, I hope that scared someone there. <laughs> what a man. Round 25. Not a lot to be fair in these team lists. So it'll be short and sharp today. And let's get into it there. Tigers and Eagles. Really just going to mention the guys I think are really good options. If you do happen to have a trade two or three, maybe even four or five if you're very, very lucky. And I'm seeing a lot of people comment down there about um, trades. What are they? Yeah, definitely uh, on that front there. If you want to cash out, if you do happen to have six, five, six, seven trades and you want to cash down in some way, you probably don't have to, owning Cleary, but Heath Mason is a very interesting one. I think he'll play, obviously, this game in round 27 in that fullback slot and is a looper next week, but I don't know if we want any loopers for next week at that. Galvin, a really good hold this week. Appy, Stefano, Fainu, all easy guys you could sell for the Manly side. Turbo, I think is a terrific buy this week. I'd have him over Garrick for sure. I'd have him just under DCE just because I think he's got a little bit more consistency in him. But there's every you know, every thought in my brain that thinks that Turbo could definitely outscore DCE over the final three weeks. That's for sure. And I doubt any of these guys do rest. I'm a little bit off Olakowatu just because his scores in recent history, his, his base stats have been pretty low. So it's hard to get excited about him, but there's every chance he could score a double and get an 85 this week, right? Every single chance in the book, so... See how that one plays out, but really it's just DCE, Turbo, potentially a Garrick or a Kohler. But with Tommy Talao out, does Kohler go back to the bench after this or not? That's the big question, but I think Tommy is the one with DCE. Pick one and good luck. Caitlin Bong is obviously another great fullback as well. So up to you on that front there for sure. If you want to go for Ponga or if you want to go for Turbo. For the Wars, not really much else to say. I think if you are looking on a head-to-head -head basis, that's the only way you'd want to jump on any of these Wars. SJ, not a bad shout, just to you know, salute him as he as he leaves our lovely game. But Barnett and you've got AFB, the two guys you want to look at in, in this squad. And that is all, to be fair, for a, more of a head-to-head -head basis there. For the Doggies, just quickly have a look at Karaz. I think he can have a good run there. The Dogs are probably the fifth easiest run and they're playing great footy. Unlikely that any of them rests, but if they're in a position where they can't move any further, up or down, I do think there's a chance they do rest and guys like Burton could miss, guys like Karaz, Crichton, um, Josh Curran obviously easily. He has been named as well, so that's the interesting one there. If, uh, I think you just hold on, clearly, there as well. Uh, and if he doesn't play, probably just use him as a loop next week and he'll be good to go for next week with a bit of rest, which would be nice there. And then Preston, still a really, really solid purchase. And then Reed Marnie, if you have multiple trades there, maybe you could look at selling him because unfortunately it's not been good enough on his front. For the Broncos there, very, very clearly, it's just Carrigan is all you should be looking at in this side. Reynolds could have a solid one, but I just don't think he's going to go the 55, 60 plus over three weeks, which you'd want. And you can get out of, I think, Burton, out of DCE, out of those wing fullbacks there in, in Ponga, Turbo, these types of guys. So Carrigan, a very, very good captaincy option this week as well. And is someone that if I buy, I'll be looking to potentially captain him. And, and it's going to be a good conversation this week, which we'll actually remember to speak about in tomorrow's buy, hold, risk, it, sell. Okay. For the Eels side of things, I think it's holds all around. They've got the Tigers in a couple of weeks, in the last round, I think. So very, very easy to hold a few of these Eels players like Blaze Stelangi, like Dylan Brown, if you've got RC, if you've got hands, if you've got Cartwright, all these types of guys are really, really good option to uh, yeah, hold on to, obviously. But the big news here is the fact that Madison has not been named. So this makes a little bit more sense. Uh, yeah, last week he got named after breaking his three of his ribs and now he's not even named the next week. And this makes complete sense just for the fact that he has got three broken ribs. So if you did hold on last week, you could maybe hold on one more and hope that he comes back next week in what's probably going to be a tougher week. Or you could sell this week. I completely understand with Wiramu Greg out for a couple of games after destroying Watson's face. Sadly, that is for sure. Raiders and the Panthers. I'm very worried about the Raiders over the next few weeks, especially their attacking players uh, and their base stat players. Obviously, you're looking for some attacking stats to do well, and that's Jamal Fogarty. And we know KO Weeks can kick in general play as well. So I don't think that that changes too much with, with Cook um, yeah, obviously kicking. A decent amount. I think it drops off a little bit, but KO will still probably kick a little bit. Starling still has Levi on the bench, so 
you know, you've got Elliot Whitehead and Young, solid holds. You've got Tarpani, a solid hold as well. Probably not buying any of these guys in that team with the run that they have coming up. For the Panthers, the big worry now is, do they all rest one week? We don't know at this point, so it's all a bit of a guessing game. We're, we're looking at potentially losing Storm players next week and also losing the Tigers, obviously Tigers players definitely, and potentially the Roosters players. So if the Panthers were to, to pull one next week as well, you don't want to be left too short in round 26. So keep an eye on that. If you do want to jump on any of these Panthers, you've got uh, that to think about, that there's a good chance of resting. So if you want to jump on Edwards, now that he's going to have the goal kicking again, which is pretty cool, but Isaac Tungor, I think you hold off on him. Casey McLean doing good stuff. Just hold on to him. Luai is a very interesting player that could really take over again, and that's exactly what he's done uh, in, the, in the games that Cleary's been out, and he is up against a team that is on the slide a little bit in the in the Raiders, and they could definitely put a score on him there. So keep an eye on, on Luai. If, I think that if he doesn't get rested, he's going to be one of the better scorers over the last three weeks, but if he does get rested, it really cooks you, whether that's round 26 or round 27 there for sure. In the forwards, we've seen Mitch Kenny out this week with... Maverick, uh, Luke Summerton coming in, obviously not someone you want to go out and purchase, but Maverick Geyer keeps his spot like I thought he would. So expect him to be a 35 to 45 type of range there. Isaiah Yo, the best captaincy option of the week. I'm pretty sure, if unless you're going for a bit of a riskier play in a turbo, a ponga, a, um, not a Carrigan, I was going to say Carrigan, um, DCE, these types of guys that uh, could be a little bit lower, could be really high in the 70s, 80s range. Isaiah Yo pretty comfortably in that 55 to 82 range like he got last week there. So yeah, still a really awesome, awesome buy, but could miss out on a week and that could be frustrating there. So Sel Cleary, he's a really good replacement, obviously the best captaincy option of the week. For the Storm, we do see Tyron Wishart come on to the wing there with Grant Anderson out, unfortunately. So um, just with the concussion, there's a big one on that front. And then Falongo moves back to the bench which is, uh, yeah, it's always fun to see him play. Everything else stays the same. And it's, you know, sitting there with Hughes is uh, not a buy. None of these guys are buys right now, in my opinion. They're all holds. You could easily move on from Bloor if you wanted to, but is he just going to play every game? Is he going to get rested? They are going to have to keep, you know, some of their players in the side. They can't just uh, shift them completely. There are going to be about half the team that does need to play. So hopefully Bloor is one of those guys for, for my team anyway as to why I'll be holding him. But uh, on the Dolphin side, no one's really a big buy either. You've got holds for Plath. You've got holds for Asako. You've got holds for uh, Isaiah Katoa, Herbie Farnworth. Herbie's probably the only guy that you could look to potentially purchase, but it is against the Storm, and they don't have a very nice run, to be fair, the Dolphins, in this last bunch of weeks. For the Bunnies up against the Knights, hopefully a good scoring game for all players involved. And uh, good news here is that Colin Matangi is fine. He was down on his haunches, in that, uh, at the end of that game, there was only a minute left or something like that, so maybe he's just cooked after a big game. But we do see Colin Matungi and Murray still in their spots, and Murray's a really terrific buy this week. Pretty similar, yeah, same bench that they, they rolled out last week. The only difference here is that Cody Walker is out with the head knock, and we see Dean Hawkins come back, back into the side there. If you're holding on to Gray, that's awesome. If you wanted to buy Cook for the last three weeks, I think that's still a solid buy, along with Cam Murray, and everyone else is holding territory. For the Knights there, Caitlin Pong, as I said, a really good purchase this week. Well, anyone I've said that's a solid buy, a hold, or a sell, I'll discuss in further detail tomorrow just to give you a good idea of, of who might be uh, the best play for the last three weeks there. Dan Gagai, an awesome one as well. Dylan Lucas back in centers, but Greg, you could jump on him with a slightly easier draw coming up. That's for sure, especially if Pong is going to you know, fling him that, that right to left pass. That'll be great. Frizzell, a really solid one to have. Kai Pierce Paul, Pierce Paul finally getting into a bit of a groove, which is nice as well with Tyson Gamble out. And we are seeing Jack Cogger into the sixth jersey. Titans and Roosters, second last game of the week. We do see the same back seven, which is uh, which is obviously good news for the Titans there. Campbell, really solid hold. You've got Fafita, same deal. Both for more does return, which is massive for anyone who has held on. And... Could be a really solid purchase this week as well. Angus Crichton seems to be missing a lot of tackles, so Bo could be involved in that on that uh, on that right hand side, which is good. And AJ Brimson sticks in the fourteen jersey. It's just Pahulu is out, and obviously Connor Watson the only out for the Roosters there. The only worry with the Roosters is that resting risk as well, and I think they're a very very high chance of taking a rest, especially if they're in somewhat a pretty good position in that top four. But we'll have to see. I think they need to win this week 
And if they do, there's a chance they could rest at least a few guys in that round 26 clash. Maybe some guys that are carrying niggles and the rest of the guys, if they're fine, maybe they continue. We'll see how that one plays out. But that's the risk for Teddy. For I don't think for Manu, he hasn't played enough games in recent history. But for Teddy, for Young, especially with Manu, given it was a hand injury, like you know, he'll be fine to get out there and do good things. Uh, Walker, potentially, or Kiri. And then guys like Angus Crichton um, and maybe Lindsay Collins could be the the risk, rest, risk for sure. Um and I think the rest will probably stay. You got Connor Watson returning next week. He won't rest because he already is this week, which is good at least for me this week. We're uh, not too stressed about getting 17 on the park. He'd just be nice to have and, and scoring well, obviously, there. And then the Dragons up against the Sharkies. P- potential purchases this week. Ben Hunt, obviously. Jacob Little. They're the two. They're the only two I'd look at. Everyone else, probably a hold. If you have Eisenhuth and these types of guys, still in the 13 role. And then the Sharkies. If you're looking at them, Kale Iro a clear hold this week and a play. You see Trindle back in seven, so Atkinson not a, a clear one to buy. McInnes back to 13. I wonder if his minutes will drop, given he played the full 80 last week and made a lot of tackles. I think it probably does. And then Britton Nickerart, you could go and jump on him as a fun little buy to finish off the year as well. Uh, along with McInnes, you know that you know, in games where they get plenty of ball themselves and, and get the odd tackle break and offload, the odd attacking stat, they're both going to go really, really big there. So... There you go. That's the, the team list for round 25. There's three rounds to go. Tune in tomorrow to the shortened version. Everything's a bit shorter at the moment just because there's uh, less to talk about, less people have trades and, and all that kind of business and actually not a lot happening. So uh, with with, um, with team lists, I think next week will be very, very different. So that'll be a fun team list to go through and, and obviously round 27 as well is absolute chaos. So yeah, wish you all the best of luck with setting up your teams for this week. Make sure you set up loopers and all that kind of stuff and we'll see you in those videos tomorrow.